What's up YouTube, Jeff back again to another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today, we're gonna to be talking about all of the features in One UI 6.1.1. It finally came to the US Unlocked S24 Ultra. Talk about some of the things that Samsung added, some of the things they removed. I'll probably say performance and camera performance on the S24 devices for another video, because we're gonna go through all these features. It's gonna take a while. Before we get started, I do wanna thank my four-year-old son, Jonathan. We got the Earth Dragon hanging out back here. He always gives us a cool toy or a dino to hang out. If you guys haven't yet, check out our website, sammyguru.com. We cover the latest tutorials, updates, news, opinions, reviews for Samsung. Just drop my uh, review of the Galaxy Z Fold 6 one month review. Uh, all the breaking news goes over there first because it's just easier to cover it there before I make a video. Also, if you're in the US, you get in our mystery box program, get a free case, cleaning kit, desktop phone stand for your Galaxy phone. If you order the S24, uh, S25 Ultra or any other S25 device, put in your email, phone number, or both, and you can sign up right there. All you got to do is use our affiliate link when you purchase in January. We cover all the shipping costs, everything like that. The link will be in the pinned comment and description. So first thing I want to talk about is auto blocker. So if we scroll down to privacy and security here in the settings and you scroll down, you'll see auto blocker right here. This is not a new feature. It's been available since the previous version of One UI. But the new features at the bottom here, which is maximum restrictions. Auto blocker is probably overkill if you're a power user because it does block the ability to sideload third party APKs. I usually turn it off, but if you're an average user, you might want to leave it on because it does give you some nice protections. Maximum restriction takes it even further uh, and turns on app protection, blocks device admin apps, and most importantly, blocks hyperlink and previews and removes all location data when sharing pictures. Now that's definitely a good idea, but you can do it on an image by image basis. If you turn this on, it's going to remove it from all of them, but it's also going to remove your ability to see hyperlinks and previews uh, and also block shared albums and galleries. So just be aware, if you turn this on, you are gonna lose some features. I personally will be leaving this feature off. Now the next one is image clipping. So if we go into the gallery, uh, you'll notice here inside the gallery, I have a photo. You should be now able to clip individual subjects in an image. Previously, it would either clip just one or it would click both at the same time. Uh, you should be able to clip individual subjects like you press and hold. I can get these two for press and hold over here. I can get her. Uh, one thing I have noticed though is it's supposed to allow any individual. So this picture has three individuals. I should be able to clip this guy or my son out. He's getting knighted here at the Great Wolf Lodge ceremony on our vacation this summer. I should be able to just clip my son. It doesn't allow you to do that if they're too close together. So Samsung says you should, but it doesn't work perfectly in practice. If you go into YouTube and then you swipe out into picture in picture mode, you can now long press and you can drag and drop this to the top or bottom of your screen to open this in split screen multitasking mode, which then of course you can choose any of your other applications to go ahead and open in split screen and utilize these. Of course, as usual, you can swipe back down and then go back in here and cancel out of YouTube anytime you want. Being able to drag and drop this into split screen mode directly from the picture in picture option of YouTube is a great feature, something that Samsung did not have before. Now the next feature is something that Samsung says should work. I've had some issues getting it to work. If you go into my files and you go into your internal storage, you're supposed to be able to drag and drop folders now directly onto the home screen. Uh, and I've tried this with some various folders. So if you long press and keep long pressing, you're supposed to be able to go home with the other finger and just drop this here. I keep getting error messages saying that it's not working. I've seen other people do this and it works great. But keep in mind, if you go into a folder like my music folder, you can still add this to the home screen. So if you go, for instance, long press here, go down to the three dots menu, you can still add to home screen just by choosing this option. And this works fine for me. This is absolutely fine. I'm not actually sure why it's not working with the drag and drop. I've seen other people do it flawlessly, just not working for me, but that is supposed to be a new feature. I'll keep trying to figure out why it's not working. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions. Next, in modes and routines, if you go into settings, go to modes and routines, you'll notice that there's a new option inside routines. If you hit the plus sign and go to the if condition, there's a new if condition. Scroll down to find message received. Now you can choose for message received this message with specific keyword. Previously we had this option, but now we have this option for any keyword found. So instead of just having one, we've got when any keywords found or all keywords. So you can separate all of these in a list and then you can make it so that you only get this routine triggered if all of the keywords in that list are found versus just one of the keywords in the list. This is certainly a nice customization feature if you have routines set up based on your messages. So this is something that some of you might like to use out there for routines. Up next is in the gallery for video. This is a cool video feature. If you use the video player, and I loaded up a video here just to show you guys, 
If you open the video in the video player by tapping on the three dots menu, open in the video player, this will let you double tap to go five seconds back and five seconds forward on either side. The left or the right lets you seek five seconds into the future or five seconds back. Absolutely amazing feature. Something that's quick and easy to use, but something that'll definitely make a difference in your day-to-day -day usage and something that I really like that Samsung added. Up next, we have two features inside the call settings. Well, actually three, but one of them is not available on the US Unlocked model. So there's actually three features in here. If we go into call, go to the three dots menu and tap on settings, you'll notice inside the settings menu that we now have two ways that we can now choose to answer and end calls. So if we go and answer and end calls, you can use two different gestures. We used to have this option, they took it away and now it's back. You can choose swipe or tap. Swipe is always the default. I rather like tap. They had the option before, now it's back. That's always great to see. The other option is you can now choose to answer the call with just the speakerphone. I don't know why I went outside of here because the option's right below the option I was just showing you. Answer using speaker by default when there's no headset or Bluetooth device connected. So if you don't have a Bluetooth device like a speaker or headphones, it's automatically going to answer using the speakerphone on your Galaxy device. I think that's a fantastic feature. I tend to use speakerphone quite a lot, particularly when I'm at the office and I'm trying to do other things. Working, it just makes it easier to do that at the end of the day. The next thing is custom profile cards, also in the phone app. Again, I don't know why I left. If you go to the contacts and tap on your own contact card, inside here at the top, you'll see create profile card. There, you can choose a photo for yourself, or if you like, you can take one up here using the camera, I'll actually do that now, just take a quick photo of myself from behind the camera. Of course, I have the countdown on, so it's going to do that. This is probably not gonna be my long-term photo here, but there's a photo of me. And now we can use this to create our profile card. So if you tap OK, you can then play around with this a little bit. You can do text, effects, but you also have the option to use the new Portrait Studio feature inside of One UI 6.1.1, cartoon, watercolor, or sketch, or comic, and then that will generate a comic representation of you that will then go on your profile card. It's really a cool feature. It's gonna show up to other Galaxy users. Of course, this isn't gonna show up to everyone that you interact or call, but if you have other Galaxy users, I have a lot of, obviously my whole family kind of uses Galaxy devices. Give me a little more facial hair than I have there. Hey, I haven't, since this picture right here, anyway, if I choose that one, let's say it puts my name there at the top and you can change the text and things like that. You can obviously change the color. You know, this color obviously isn't very readable. You have the entire color palette. You can kind of change, get it to show up there. And then there is my profile card inside of the contacts app. Up next, if we go back to the gallery, we have another feature which is live effect. So if you have a photo, like again, this one of my son from our vacation this summer, if you swipe up, you'll notice there's a couple tiles here. One of them says live effect. If you tap on that, it's going to add a live effect, which is basically uh, kind of a motion photo where it's kind of like a cinematography kind of effect that's applied. You see how it's kind of panning in or around the subjects. And you have the option to either share this or you can save a copy. Of course, it's not gonna save over your original image. You'll still have the original image as well but then you'll also have that in the gallery. You can do whatever you want with it, share it later, uh, et cetera. You can even set it as a live wallpaper uh, or a wallpaper on your lock screen if you're interested. And if you are in an album, it'll go ahead and save it right there in the album for you, as you can see that it's done in my One UI 6.1.1 album here. The next thing I wanna talk about is translate in listening mode inside the interpreter. So if we go up here in my quick settings, I have the interpreter up here. If you turn on listening mode, which is over here, we used to have conversation mode. Listening mode is new. As soon as you hit this button, it's automatically going to translate from one language to another. So I'm gonna go English to Spanish. We'll go ahead and hit the button right there. And it's going to start translating automatically in real time. That's what I really like about it is this is fast, quick, and efficient. And you get little blurbs in real time as it translates. And as you can see, the text recognition even though I'm speaking relatively fast, as many of you have told me in previous videos, it does a very good job of keeping up at the end of the day. Once you're done, you can tap the mic off and then you'll have your translation right there. You can see up here, actually we'll show you your history so you can go back and scroll through. And of course, you can see that translation in real time from there. You can change the languages. Each language you download from the add language button, 
you're gonna have to download a new language pack, of course, uh, in order to utilize it. I had to download the Spanish pack, which is what I use the most here in Arizona, you know, communicating with people who speak Spanish uh, and maybe speak less English. A very useful feature if you're in an area where you need to speak multiple languages every day. The next feature is one that we covered over on the website that not very many other people have talked about, and it's only available in certain regions. But I want to mention this because it's pretty cool. It's another feature inside of the phone app, and it is a quick toggle for voice focus. So some of you may know that you have the ability to turn on voice focus uh, when you're inside of a call, which isolates your voice a little bit. And that's always been able to and de-enabled by swiping down the notification shade. I'll show you in a second. But there's a new quick toggle, and here it is. Um, Sumit, who's our full-time writer, if you look here at the top, you'll see the little quick toggle right there. He took some screenshots on his S24 Ultra. He's in India, but this is not available in the US. You have to swipe down and enable it from the drop-down menu. So I'll actually show you here. Let me go back. Let me call UPS customer service. I always like to call them when I need a test call. You see right here, if you swipe down the notification shade, once you're in the call, and of course I minimized my piece there. You've got mic mode, voice focus versus standard. I always have it on voice focus kind of as my default because it's usually the best. Um, but there is no quick toggle that pops up here in the US. You've got call assist, but no voice focus quick toggle like he has here. So this appears to be rolling out to certain models around the globe, but unfortunately not in the US unlocked model. It'd be really nice to see this feature because I think it's really nice. It's, it's kind of unfortunate uh, if you forget about voice focus, you don't have it on by default to remember to swipe down the notification shade. It's a couple extra swipes, takes a couple extra seconds, but more than that, people probably forget about it, and so they end up not using it. The next thing I've heard a lot of complaints about is Smart Select being removed uh, from the Apps panel, the Edge panel. You'll notice inside of Edge panels, you no longer have a Smart Select panel. So you can see here, if you go into Settings, there used to be a Smart Select panel that you could have in here, but what you will notice is you have the option inside of Edge Panels now to enable the Galaxy AI version of Smart Select uh, as well as Sketch to Image. Both of those are there. So up here, you'll notice if you swipe out, this is Sketch to Image. This is in fact the Galaxy AI uh, version of Smart Select. Down here with a little settings, you can actually change this. You can turn on touch and hold or tap to open split screen view, and you can turn off sketched image in Smart Select if you want. Now this is actually better, because if you tap on this, you get the cool animation for one thing, it shows you what's happening, but then you can also go ahead and just tap on anything, and it will select intelligently what it is you want to do. Now you can image saved, obviously, is one thing you can do. If we go back here and go to Smart Select again, you still can kind of circle something on your own and it will intelligently try to figure out what you want to do. Really cool thing is, not only can you download, share, and kind of copy this, you can also pin to your screen so you can move this around. And you can even, as you guys saw there, you can utilize sketch to image with this feature as well. So if I circle this, like it's a picture of the moon, whatever on this wallpaper, I can go ahead and enable sketch to image and it will enable me to turn this in to you know, whatever I want. Like I could draw, you know, like another object. Maybe I could draw the sun here so it looks like the sun and the moon are close together. Whatever you want, you can add things to the clips that you get from Smart Select. So this still works inside apps like Instagram, places like that. That's where I typically use Smart Select the most. I will say, depending on what you draw, it can do a pretty good job. You see here it actually has the sun back there and then I could save that and obviously I could tweak it a little bit further if I'm interested. So Smart Select is still there, it'll still work, you can still access it here from the uh, Edge panel, but it's just not an option, specific Edge panel option. It's actually better though, because it's Galaxy AI enhanced. A Couple of other things that I wanted to mention, one thing is you now have the option inside of the Samsung calendar application to do highlighting. You can do highlighting within one like individual event on your calendar. You can see here, if I choose the highlighter from the bottom here, you'll notice that now I can just highlight like some single things on my calendar that I want to remember, like these are important events. The highlighter can be not fully transparent, so you might want to reduce some of the transparency in here before using it, but it is a really cool feature. Of course, you've been able to use the S Pen to write on individual events uh, for quite some time now, 
but you can now do that with the highlighter as well. A PDF now inside of the Notes app, it will allow you to actually get a summary here. So if you tap at the bottom, you can see that you get this awesome summary or translation. This is a menu for Cafe Zupas, so it can go ahead and read this and it will summarize all of the information here and it tells you exactly what it has. You can copy, add to wherever you want, etc. Up here you can get a more detailed summary if it doesn't give you enough detail about that particular document and you can get more information about the particular important items that are on the menu here. So this is another really useful feature that I found that I use over and over again inside of Galaxy AI. So of course we've talked about a lot of the important features. I've talked about mainly the ones that I use the most, also some of the hidden ones that at the end of the day, you probably haven't seen called out. Of all the other features, you do have Call Assist, which gives you translation and calls. Uh, Chat Assist, which will allow you to compose and get style and grammar edits uh, inside of your Samsung keyboard. We talked about Interpreter, Note Assist, Transcript. Um, browsing Assist gives you summaries of web pages as well. This is only really if you use the Samsung internet browser though. So if you use Chrome, then that's not gonna work. We talked about sketched image, talked about photo assist as well with the portrait studio inside of creating your own contact card. You've got the photo ambient wallpaper, which will allow you if you want. It's not a feature I use a lot because here in Phoenix, it's always sunny. There's no rain or snow or anything interesting to show up, but you can turn this on uh, inside wallpaper and style. So if you go into settings, if you go to wallpaper and style and you go to change wallpapers, the photo ambience right there, but you really need to have a specific uh, wallpaper that is of an outside landscape and also to want it to change with the weather in your particular region, you need to have some interesting weather to make it interesting. It's a feature that they introduced that I haven't used a ton, but maybe some of you guys will use it a little bit more. Anyway, those are mainly the One UI 6.1.1 features I found. It's a shame they removed Smart Select, but the Galaxy AI version of Smart Select uh, is even better. So even though it's not officially an edge panel, you can now get the new version that's revamped and pinned there. Let me know how you guys are enjoying One UI 6.1.1 in the comment section below. Any questions, comments, concerns, make sure you again sign up over on our website, samiguru.com. Sign up for the Mystery Box program if you're going to order the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Get free accessories for that. Appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.